This week I chat with my good friend, Sarah Nyango, a translator by trade and a well-known fixture of Ottawa's community and television and also radio broadcaster and a longtime advocate for Ottawa and Gatineau's black community. So come on and follow me. Hi Sarah, how are you? Hi Sabine. Um, you're a media personality, and you've been very active yes. in the community and also on social media. Oh, yes, ma'am. But before you got into social media, yeah. you were very active mm -hmm. in Kenya. So tell me your trip from Kenya up until uh, to Ottawa. Well, I was born in Kenya, and uh, my dad was a career diplomat. And uh, when I was little, he was posted to Brussels, to Belgium. As you know, I speak French. So yes, I'm actually French-speaking because... You know, most of my childhood was spent there. And after Brussels, my dad was posted here to um, Ottawa. Ottawa. That was his next posting after that. Mm -hmm. And before becoming a media personality, well, y you have, y you wear many hats. You're yeah. a translator. Yes, that's, that's, that's what I trained as. Mm -hmm. um, I went, I did my last three years of high school here in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. Then my uh, dad was posted to Zaire. Uh, wow. which is now known as DRC. Mm -hmm. uh, I did grade 12 and 13 together in one year, so I could finish before my parents left. And I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to go to Ottawa U. My parents did not want me to go into journalism school. Why? Because where I'm from in uh, Kenya, it's looked down upon, and it's a, back then it was not deemed a suitable profession for a young lady. Mm -hmm. uh, so my parents said, languages, you're good at that. You're going to be a UN interpreter, so there. So I got the scholarship. I got into the School of Translators at Ottawa U, and um, I did translation. I went back to Kenya, actually, worked for the Kenya government as a language instructor, uh, French. I worked at Alliance Francaise. I got a scholarship to go to France to do my master's degree in uh, linguistics. And then after that, I went back to Kenya. I had met a Canadian guy in between all of that mm -hmm. and uh, from Quebec. And he decided, OK, that's it. <laughs> You're moving to Canada with me. <laughs> so I married him and moved to Quebec. And Quebec, uh, Gatineau? Yes, and I've been here ever since. Ever since. And ever since, you've been uh, a staple in <laughs> Ottawa's community yeah. because you started a black Ottawa 411. Mm -hmm. Tell me all about it because you started in 2003 and that's that was way before that's media, right, social media. Ago. Uh, so basically, uh, as you know, I am I'm a board member with Black History Ottawa and I've been volunteering with Black History Ottawa since 1993. And in 2003, um, there was an information gap. There was, it was very difficult for the black community to uh, keep up with what was going on in the community. The community was growing, rapidly expanding, younger and younger, and uh, very dispersed. And since at that time, our, I already was uh, doing community radio and uh, TV. Mm -hmm. Like Black on Black? Black on Black, Africa Visited. Um, I decided, so how about I just uh, compile all this information and house it somewhere virtually so that Everybody, not just the black community, but people who are interested in what we do, what we like, uh, where our businesses are, etc., could just go and find us in one place because we don't have a community center. So I created a virtual community center called Black Ottawa. For and the response was immediate. Oh, right away. People were like, what? Oh, my goodness. I don't have to run up and down trying to find out where the Haitian restaurant is, <laughs> where the Jamaican party place is, or anything like that. I just go to one place. I see everybody together because... What I also wanted to do was to really reflect the diversity mm -hmm. in the black community, which a lot of people didn't really realize uh, was there. So everybody's on there, the Somalis, the Haitians, the Jamaicans, the St. Lucians, everybody is on there. And it's all kinds of events and activities from workshops to lectures to conferences 
to parties, to club events, to everything. And then there's uh, listings of different black uh, businesses and special announcements, uh, you know, that come up, uh, government announcements targeting specifically our community, because mm -hmm. that's another thing I found was that um, mainstream institutions, uh, Ottawa Public Library, uh, Library Knock Out, et cetera, they had a, a hard time finding, you know, a place where they could reach the most African Caribbean and black people in one shot. So and you did that. Yeah. And and it really contributed also as not only being a one stop shop for information, mm -hmm. but you became a uh, astonishing uh, popular person in the community. It was the go to girl. <laughs> and and that was before social media. Yeah. How did social media change your platform? Oh. And mm -hmm. also um, the the recognition that you got. Well, social media just sort of amplified and multiplied everything I already was doing and actually um, encouraged me to do things on a, a much larger scale. So instead of just focusing on uh, National Capital Region, I started doing outreach with Montreal and Toronto with organizations like BBPA, Jeune Chambre de Commerce, uh, yes. uh, Les Haitiens, and uh, even all the way to the United States, Washington, D.C., uh, the Congressional Black Caucus uh, Foundation, etc and uh, even to Africa, <laughs> uh, so that there's a connectedness. Because um, what drives me in my life in general? Connecting people up. I mm -hmm. do that well. I'm good at that. It's a talent I have, and I use it every chance I get. And I thought, wow, social media is going to allow me to do that tenfold. Mm -hmm. And recently on your social media, we saw you at the Afro-Caribbean Cotillion. <laughs> I got it. Yes, Cotillion. Cotillion. So yes. what is that all about? Oh my goodness. It's just a cause after my own heart. So uh, the Afro-Caribbean Cotillion was started by uh, a woman called um, Suzanne Lavertu, who I've been following since the early 90s. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's the creator of the Cultural Arts Studio. So they decided that um, in this black community, there was no rite of passage type of event to help young people transition from childhood to early adulthood. Mm -hmm. And you know, in, in the Caribbean and in Africa, we, we all have rites of passage. I know in uh, my country, in Kenya, you know, there's special ceremonies that happen, et cetera. And there was nothing like that here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she modeled this event after what already goes on in the United States and actually was already going on in, in uh, Toronto. So basically, it's uh, young people who are nominated by their parents or guardians or you know older friends, and then they are put through a training, a uh, four-month training. How long? Where they learn. Long it's four months. Yeah, it's four months. Wow. Yeah, and it's very intensive. They are trained by community mentors. So in the mentor group, you have people who are financial experts. You have people who know about health and wellness. Uh, you have people who know about uh, wardrobe, clothing, etc., uh, job search skills, resume preparation, uh, safety. Uh, so it prepares you for life. It really is um, that that missing piece for our, a lot of our young black people, where uh, they are equipped. They are equipped to successfully navigate the transition from teenagehood to early adulthood and is there a like and it's African a community event yes it's, it's a, a community event and that's very important that element that the community is invested mm -hmm. so these young people are presented it's sort of like you know the cotillions in the south in a way where exactly. you know debutante ball and that sort of thing except this is not as pretentious uh <laughs> but well, I mean, a little and, bit, yeah. Because they're all you have to dress nice. up. It's the young men in their t in their tuxes and all of this, yeah. and the young ladies with their gloves, you know, all the way up to the elbow, and the long gowns and everything, and tiaras. But the community is very much involved. It's very much presenting these young people to the community that will now, after the ball and the celebration. Be more prepared. Surround them and encourage them and support them. And when they see them on the street, hey, aren't you the class of 2017? Yeah, I know you. And it also is a good way for them to connect with resources in the wider black community. 
It's interesting because when I saw the picture online, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was only a ball, but the no, no, educational no, no. part very much so, is yeah. is is not really well um, uh, promoted. Yeah. But All you see is at the end. Yes. The the finished but, product. But it's but it's really great to see that mm -hmm. that's the celebration mm -hmm. of the four months of work. Yes. Yeah. You're also um, I saw a picture that really um, really says a lot about you because you like Canada. I love. And you I love, love being a black woman. Yeah. And you like veterans also. Oh. And we saw you recently. I know you go to the, the Remembrance Day yeah. every year. Without fail. Every year. 20 years. 20 years. Yep. And we saw you with a pin of an uh, uh, Air Force veteran. Mm -hmm. Why is it so important for you to be involved on that day? And, and we live in Ottawa, so it's a huge day. Right. The Cenotaph is located here, the National uh, War Memorial. To me, veterans embody the ultimate patriot. It is such an act of sacrifice and... Um, concern for fellow citizens to put your life on the line like that mm -hmm. and uh, in some cases I've known veterans who went overseas um, I've met veterans who were in Afghanistan uh, a lot of when I started this work actually it was um, a documentary I did about black veterans because I was frustrated that in mainstream media on November 11th I never saw anybody that looked like me and I said to myself, well, come on, we must have fought because mm -hmm. blacks have been in Canada since the 1600s. So we must have been in a bunch of those wars. Sure enough, digging deeper, I found out that we had participated in uh, Canada's military efforts. And I came across uh, a man by the name of Owen Rowe. Mm -hmm. And he was sort of a West Indian military historian. And um, so he made me promise because he was at the end of his life he was dying and he made me promise to continue the work he was doing documenting the contributions of our black veterans I took that on I took that very seriously these are the people who paved the way the rights and freedoms I enjoy today are because uh, veterans like mr. Rowe who by the way was a porter despite his education wow. university education had to work as a porter to support his family um, they're the ones who fought those fights um, for us. Equity, equality in housing, employment, even just the freedom to, to vote, for example. Our military, our black veterans. Mm -hmm. So definitely every year, the least I can do is show up on November 11th, no matter what the weather is. And remember the young men at Ypres, Vimy, uh, Passchendaele, etc., who put Paved their the lives way. on the line. Yes. And you do that so well by sharing a lot of the posts of Cathy Grant that yes. is also very yeah. active on social media and Absolutely. really put at the forefront veterans. Yes, yes. Cathy Grant, in fact, is Owen Rowe's daughter. I met her at his funeral. I met wow. Cathy at his funeral. And we right away we clicked. He had talked about her a lot. I'd never met her, and I met her at his funeral. And um, I told her what her dad had told me, and she said, he told me the same thing. And I said, well, I guess... He has decided we will work together. So two We've been together ever since, 2005 to now. We've I been together ever since, and I'm the Ottawa contact for uh, Legacy Voices, which mm -hmm. she created. And basically what she does is research, because Kathy's philosophy is you need facts, you need information, and you need credible information. And the way to get that is to actually do the work, do the research. Don't go by you know, stories you were told, etc. We spent a lot of time at Library and Archives going through military records. And then it occurred to her that, you know what, we, used to, we need to digitize a lot of these records before they disappear. And there are a lot of young people, because our focus is the young people who have no idea. And we want them to know. So on social media, she's very, very active with videos of any and every event she goes to that discusses the black contribution to Canada's military effort. And we also uh, pledged to her dad that we would continue to lay a wreath on behalf of all black veterans who ever served under Canada. Wow. And we've been doing that since 2006. And uh, so I, I, I get it from the Legion. And uh, we always try to designate a young black person to go and lay that wreath after we've briefed the young person on you know why they're doing it who they're honoring and and that sort of thing 
And I have to say that uh, we've been getting a lot of recognition from not just from the media, but from the public who are very grateful to know this Exist. history. Canada is multicultural. So we're sort of helping promote that mm -hmm. element. And also um, educate. Oh, absolutely. And I think on social media is the best way oh, yeah. to educate in an efficient way. Yes. And, and, and it has no borders. No, none. None. Another way that you're, you're using your voice on social media, because you are well known, not only here in Ottawa, but across, like I know people from the States that knows you, <laughs> um, is yeah. uh, the movement Bring Back Our Girls. Oh, gosh, As an African yeah. mm -hmm. a descendant, an mm -hmm. African born, mm -hmm. how did it come, uh, how did this movement um, affected you? Oh my gosh. So this, of course, happened in Nigeria and these uh, young women and girls were kidnapped from school, imagine. You think school is a safe place mm -hmm. to go. And you and I know that for a lot of our um, girls, women and girls in Africa, the key to their empowerment is education. Yep. So imagine somebody deciding, you know what, we don't want girls to go to school and we don't want them empowered. We're going to go where they're learning, snatch them up, take them away, brutalize them, and Lord knows what else. And so when I heard about that, and I'm also close to the Nigerian community, quite close. And I just, I couldn't just sit down and do nothing. So, you know, I decided I need to use my platform in social media to spread the word, just like people like Michelle Obama were doing, you know, and, uh, and just. And, and you got picked up by media <laughs> because yeah. people were buzzing about this because you yeah. were so loud yeah. on social media and mm. when I say loud and it's a, in a very positive way mm -hmm. and you really brought like the mainstream media to take a look at what's happening in yeah. Africa yeah yeah a lot of a lot of media came and filmed our protest in front of the Nigerian embassy and at the Canadian uh, human rights uh, monument yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do you think it's gonna change like I know like social media is used to to create movements but mm -hmm. do you think that all the movement that we see on social media could really actually change something i believe in it but yes do you i i believe in it and i see it so for example you've had this whole living while black issue so black lives matter you know black votes matter um i support both of those uh, movements the mobilization that is possible because of social media, and it's not just mobilization, but the instant nature of the mobilization and the wide reach, I mean, you cannot, I, I, I doubt that any of these hashtag movements could ever have gained the kind of momentum that they did in such shorter time had it not been for social media. So social media is very powerful, gun control, uh, abortion rights, or reproductive rights rather, uh, but for the black community, really, it's, we are documented, documenting what is happening and uh, calling out uh, bad actors mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. forcing decision makers to do something. So bring back our girls. The government of Canada woke up because it's on social media in Ottawa, the nation's capital. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not just black people. Everybody's riled up about it. Mm. So, so what's yeah. next for Sour and Yango? just continue to do what I do. My, again, my thing is to connect people up, to give those unheard voices a platform, whether it's on Black on Black, whether it's on the community uh, TV station that I have another show on, and whether it's on, especially on my social media or my website, Black Ottawa 411. Sarah, who mm -hmm. do you follow on social media? I'm, I'm on your page right yes, now. Yes, my and girl I, Lupita uh -huh. Yongo. Mm -hmm. And I follow her because I'm actually friends with her cousins. Way to name drop, eh? Uh, yes, Childhood boom. friends. <laughs> her cousins, her, her aunt is a friend of my mom's from high school. Wow. So, yeah, we're the same Sorry. tribe, the same, <laughs> you know, era, the whole. But I also follow her because um, of the work that she does, you mm -hmm. know, in uh, culture and some of the humanitarian stuff she does. I follow Michelle Obama. Who doesn't follow Michelle Obama? Who doesn't? Oh, come on. Uh, yeah, so Michelle Obama, because she inspire, in, inspires me. And uh, lastly, I really follow my friend Kathy Grant, because I want to keep up with the work that she's doing, documenting black Canadian history, not just um, in Ottawa or Toronto, but 
wherever she is invited. For example, at the opening of the uh, new uh, African American uh, History and Culture Museum in Washington, D.C., yes. she was a speaker. She was asked wow. to present there. Wow. So, and she's very active on social media. She records everything. So, yeah. And you share everything. I share everything. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Sarah, thank you for coming Thanks by. Thanks for the invitation. No problem. But yeah. we're going to continue to follow you because you have a lot to say yes. about the black community oh, yes. here in Ottawa and across the world. So yeah. let's pound on it. Mm.